In the next two sections, section 1.2 and 1.3, we're going to be studying logic in the meta theory. So remember, this means that we're going to be studying logic as our object of study. So we're going to be looking at logic from the outside and looking at properties of logic. So for example, in section 1.2, this section here, we're going to be looking at some easy properties of well-formed formulae. So well-formed formulae are objects within logic, so we're looking at properties of well-formed formulae, so this means that we're looking at well-formed formula from the outside. When we're studying logic, so when we're studying in logic, we are using the well-formed formula to prove other theorems. This distinction will be made clear as we get further along within um, this first chapter. So, to study some easy properties of well-formed formulae, we're going to look at the notion of induction on the complexity of well-formed formula. Okay, so first we're going to review what induction is in general, right? And then, and then we'll look at how to apply this in this more complicated setting. So the learning outcomes for this section are, by the end of this section, you will be able to prove properties of well-formed formula by analyzing formula calculations and by induction on formula. So within this video, we're going to be focusing on simply a review of induction and then understanding, in theory, what the form of induction on formulae means. Then within class, we will actually apply this to prove properties of well-formed formulae using these two different methods, so induction on formula and also analyzing formula calculations. So we'll look at a couple of examples of different properties of well-formed formula at the end of this video and then more in class. Okay, so let's begin by a simple review of simple induction on natural numbers. So you may recall that we use induction to prove properties of natural numbers. So if we let p of n be some property of the natural number n, then our goal is to prove that goal is to prove that p of n holds for every natural number n, or to prove that p of n holds for um, arbitrary n, or to prove that p of n is true for arbitrary n. Okay, so this may be very easy to do. We may simply choose an arbitrary n and n, so n is just a variable, and we prove that that the property holds. Um, but in many cases, uh, it'll be easier to use proof by induction. So recall that induction has two steps. The first step is the basis step, which requires that we prove that the property holds for the very first natural number, 0. So we prove that p of 0 holds or that p of 0 is true. The second step is the induction step, and it has two parts. The first part is the induction hypothesis. So we, we assume this induction hypothesis holds. That is, that p of k holds where k is equal to n minus 1. So if n is our arbitrary natural number, if we want to prove p of n is true, we assume that the property holds for the number before that. And then we need to prove that p of n holds using this induction hypothesis, that the property holds for k. Many times in induction, you fix an arbitrary natural number k, assume that p of k holds, and then prove that p of k plus 1 holds. This is exactly that same statement. Okay, so this is supposed to be all review, so if it's coming back to you, great. If you want to practice, here is an example that you can try on your own. So our property of the natural numbers or a property of the natural number n says that the sum of the first n natural numbers, so from 0 up to n, is given by this formula, n times n plus 1 divided by 2. So you would apply this proof by induction to prove that case. So the basis step is easy. To show that p of 0 holds, we simply say that 0 is equal to this side of the formula when we substitute n equal to 0. So you can check for yourself that that is true. The induction step tells us that we suppose that this formula holds for an arbitrary k, and then we prove that the sum from 0 to k plus 1 
is equal to the formula where we substitute k plus 1 into n here. So it would be k plus 1 times k plus 2 over 2 using the fact that we know that the sum from 0 to k is given by the formula k times k plus 1 over 2. So this gives you um, an easier way to prove this than by simply trying to show this equality holds for any n. Okay, so you may be asking and trying to remember why does induction actually work? Why is it that we can have this assumption? Why is it that we're not assuming what we're trying to prove here. So we can look at a simple example to help us formulate how induction works. So if we want to prove that this robot R can go up the staircase to any arbitrary step, this is sort of like a property of the natural numbers, where the natural numbers are the numbers of our stairs. So we can prove that the robot can get to any stair n using induction. So how does this look? So the basis case is to prove that our robot, our robot can get to the beginning of the staircase, so can get to step 0. So we need to prove that outright somehow. And then the induction step tells us that if r can get to say step n minus 1, so we need to prove that if it can get to n minus 1, how does it get to step n? Okay, so that's the form of a proof by induction. So why does this prove that our robot can get from 0 to step n for any step or stair n? Well, if we can prove that the robot can get to 0, and the induction step tells us how to get from 0 to 1, for example, or from any step to any other step, then we can simply repeat this argument of the inductive step to get from 0 to 1, and then repeat it to get from 1 to 2, and then continue to repeat it to get from n minus 1 to n. So by a continuous repeating of this induction step, we can get from 0 to any stair n. So that is an example to see formally how induction works and why this proves, for example, that our robot can go up the staircase to any arbitrary step. Okay, so in the next video, we'll look at the other type of induction you're assumed to know, which is strong induction, um, and how strong induction is applied to induction on formula.